Hey, Bark Lord. Thanks for that excellent question. Um, the answer is, uh, um, what's going on for society right now is almost like, uh, if I have the term right, cognitive dissidence. Um, you could watch something go wrong over and over and over again. Um, for instance, like an investment company um, gets in deep, deep trouble because it makes all these risky investments. Then it gets a bailout. And the reason it does those, does those risky investments is because uh, yeah, there's a big payoff, right? And uh, then they get, they get a bailout, you know, we've got to save this company, it's important for the economy. And then what do they do? Well, they, they, they invest in the exact same thing. And they're like, well, because this is the fastest payout. So, uh, yeah, they're going to... You know, things, uh, things won't break so many times until uh, we're like, hey, you know, we're just going about things the wrong way. It absolutely won't happen. There's too many gold rings. There's too many Ferraris. There's too many castles. Um, there's always going to be that feeling that uh, you might make it big time. So as long as... As long as everyone feels like, oh, I might, one day I might be that rich cat, uh, then, uh, and yeah, that's how it's going to work. So, let me tell you about my fantasy land. It is a, uh, um, it's a society on a micro scale. Every, uh, community is like a human body. And, uh, everything's spaced out. Everything has plenty of room. Uh, everything ha can uh, produce or accept and deal with twice as much as necessary. So you get like a small little community, and there's a uh, you know there's, there's the town hall, the, the government. There's um, you know, what all what the locals need for produce. Like small little companies that just produce like clothes for the local people. Like that's all you need. And you you know there there'll be like. Uh, you know, there's cool designs and things like that, but uh, you know you're not gonna you're not gonna send away. I have a hat from China, for God's sake. Uh, no one from China. If you buy a hat from China, it will cost a fortune. <laughs> so you just don't do it. It's not important. Um, and so you have all these little mini communities that could uh, um, are sustainable. They uh, they're as close to like an Amish, Amish ideal as you can get, and that uh, it produces a vast majority of its food, or maybe a little bit more. Um, then you get it that kind of like the uh, the storage idea that uh, every community has uh, five to ten years worth of uh, savings. Um, oh, I had an idea about the economy. It would be half cash, half kind of barter points, and there would be a system in place that. Uh, no matter what you sell, um, you uh, you have to accept, or maybe a portion of your business has to accept um, barter points. So that way, like, why if why you're writing your book? I mean, like everyone, you know, no one's forced to do any, this, that, or the other thing. But why they're uh, oh, gotta get away from the fan? Why they're doing that? Um, they get just enough barter points while they're writing their book uh, to eat. Um, shelters. Uh, uh, a part of that. Um, clothing's a part of that. Uh, you know, the essentials. Uh, maybe a little less, a little extra for, you know, fun stuff. Especially if you have work supplies. And like, say, say you're cranking out some amazing works um, and uh, the demand is starting to, you know, really press uh, on you. Like, we really want to hear more from this uh, Joe author. Um, then actually, the, the, the communities. Because uh, each one of these small little communities, like a body, makes up like a cell in a larger body, and uh, and these the, the governments would be not our rulers, but they would be our uh, our supporters um, and our go-to people. And so when uh, someone's work of art, let's say, is starting to take off, they're like, well, this person needs more of these barter points, uh, or they need an ability uh, to charge. Um, more money for their books because we believe this is beneficial to society and so we need to allow them uh, to succeed um, so you know if so if anybody is like is just suddenly hands down awesome at something like so-and-so's mine just uh, are really productive the amount of the waste they produce is really minimized and uh, the, the, the amount of workers to the amount of uh, output is just perfectly balanced um, 
they're like, well, you know, we need to, uh, we need to fast track this guy. We need to make things easier for this guy because he's a benefit to humanity. But under no circumstances would he be put in charge of 50 mines. You know, if he was able to bring 50 mines about, if he could do that, um, you know, but we wouldn't give that to him. It's, uh, you know, life would be what you make it, and, uh, and there wouldn't be anything holding you back. Um, the only thing I imagine, of course, uh, you know, my rule, the only thing that would hold you back in this society is interfering with somebody else's uh, progress. Couldn't do it. Forbidden. But I imagine, uh, you know, that the, there'd be a big stress on things being local. Um, and things that couldn't be, um, like, you know, uh, scientific, scientific research in Antarctica, let's say. Um, you know, they're not going to be able to grow their food. Um, that would be, have to be factored in with a balance of points, um, because this is valuable to humanity, and thus they get a, a larger share of points, and also uh, air travel, uh, so they could get their supplies. Um, I also think that uh, uh, travel uh, would be uh, by animal. It'd be, it'd be horse. It'd be horse and buggy. Um, if, uh, cause I'd say, because all, all the towns, like the, the cell lining, the cell walls, uh, are going to be nature and streams and lakes. And everything, everything's going to stay away from those, because those are our cell walls. So uh, natural corridors where, uh, where animals could just flow across our country uninterrupted. Um, you know, fish could, uh, um, that's the other thing, too, about uh, under no circumstances would poisons go in the river. Um, you know, the, the, the whole thing of like being sustainable, like any, any kind of waste you're producing, even, even before it gets to that point, you're like, how much waste do you think you're going to produce? Um, and if it's millions of gallons, if like, uh, like they do in Russia, where they like do, uh, I, I know they do this all over the place, but I remember a time in Russia where they do, uh, uh, is it, is it ar arsenic mining, where they pump a poison into the ground and that, uh, that rises up. Um, kind of like a, a fractal uh, gas mining. Um, they do that as well. They pump chemicals into the ground and that forces, you know, valuables up. Um, it also produces uh, epic lakes worth of, uh, of poison. And uh, one of those lakes got so big they built a dam to keep it in. And the reason I remember it is that dam broke. Under no circumstances in Earl's world uh, would that be authorized. You would not be able to mine with epic amounts of poison, and your idea of containing it is building a big wall and letting it sit there. Oh, we got a wall. It's like it's like a lake. It just kills everything that touches it. So uh, it, I mean, it would be smaller. There wouldn't be these gold rings. There wouldn't be Ferraris. Um, you know, everybody would know where their food comes from, where their clothes comes from. They would know where their waste goes. Uh, they would know every aspect. I, I imagine everyone would have to be a small businessman. Um, and uh, they, uh, there would be uh, you know, a, a, a template laid down, an education system laid down to help everybody. You know, someone wants to, is interested in uh, transportation and transporting because goods are going to have to move. Um, but uh, you know, exporting and importing... Um, is always going to be frowned on because that can't be sustained over the long haul. Um, the the uh, it would exist. It would just exist on a small scale on on a uh, a permit basis. The same thing with like you want you live in uh, the middle of the country and you want to go see the ocean. Um, you would just arrange for your small business to be taken care of and uh, you would get on a horse and you'd ride to the ocean. If your business was such that uh, it couldn't handle your absence. Um, you would then just go down to the and local travel office and file for a travel permit, saying like, "I have, I have this week here before my my crops are ready. Uh, everything else is sorted out. I've got a foreman on on duty, and uh, I'm going to take my family uh, to the coast. So uh, I need a permit for a car for a week, and you'd get it. Um, you know, like the whole idea of like everyone just kind of like willy nilly racing around in their cars wherever they want, like driving a quarter mile." Uh, you would not be able to get a car to drive a quarter mile. There'd be a cart and a horse for you. <laughs> I could go on and on. I've actually really thought a lot about what this perfect world uh, would look like. I imagine it looking like, I said human body, but really I think of it as uh, heart and lungs. You know how uh, lungs all have those small little uh, 
compartments. They look like they're like a big one thing, but they're really they're just made up of a ton of little things, and that little things, uh, um, you know, keep us alive. And that's how uh, I imagine society would be uh, built, uh, like lungs, or like a tree, or like the veins and the leaves. So, all right, uh, Bark Lord. Oh, and my question for you, uh, Bark Lord, is uh, I kind of want to know about the. I've had I've I've done something similar to what you've done in the past, where you just like get to the point where a, you find a job's kind of being poisonous to you. It's kind of almost making you sick, and you just leave. And I went through all sorts of uh, uh, interesting uh, personal battles about that. Uh, so uh, I'm interested to hear about uh, what you think about uh, um, you know you you left your job and now you're looking for a new a new way, way of life and uh, I'm kind of interested in how that feels to you so um, all right Bark Lord I will see you in the tubes. <laughs>